Alright folks, Hacksplain here. I'm having a really interesting challenge for you today. Today we're talking about the database schema challenge. It's part of the difficulty three challenges and it tells us to exfiltrate the entire DB schema definition via an SQL injection attack. So let's take a second over here to get the important information. We should use a SQL injection payload to get the entire database schema. We do not know which database it is and we do not know where to search for. But think about it. A database usually is something which stores some data which is needed by the application for a longer time. And let's scroll up a little bit and go to our starting page to always choose shop and what we see over here is we do have products products are usually stored in a database because they do have different values like the name there is a price there is usually some sort of amount of, of that specific product which is in stock and much more to it so there is a high chance that there's a database behind the whole product catalog and what we see over here is that there is a surge possibility right up here in oh two shop so what we can try is we can say let's look for banana juice because banana juice is my favorite juice as you guys know and we do get back the banana juice so what happens if we search for apple juice then we do get back all products with Apple in it. What happens if we try to provoke an error like putting down a quote character, which is something really typical for a SQL injection payload. You usually start with a quote character and see what the application returns or what the database returns. So let's do that. And we see that there are no results found. There unfortunately is no error message. But if we look closely and what you always have to do is use your proxy and see what is happening in between. And let's do that right now. I have been using Burb throughout this whole process to look at my requests going out. And if you look at that, there were only two requests being sent, which is the REST product search with the Q parameter, which doesn't come with any search queries. But let's think about it. We were just searching for banana, apple, and apple and the quote character. So why are those not appearing here? This is interesting. The answer is the search in the UI is done on client side. So this is not actually sending something back to the server. This is not querying the database. This is also the reason why we do not get an error message. So let's look at what this message over here was actually doing and we see that we got back all the data like all the initial data that we've seen when we clicked on os2 shop in the top over here so we got back all the products so think about it if we want to provoke an error right now to see if in that case the q parameter is actually prone to sql injection payload we're going to send this to Burp Repeater and see if we can mess around with the application that we do. So let's click Control all like we used to. You see the Repeater tab lighting up right here. We go to Repeater and we will just send this again to the application. And we see that we get all the data back exactly like we would assume to get it, right? So let's try something else let's go over here use the Q parameter and say banana because bananas are my favorite juice so we'll send this to the server and I only get back the banana juice so it seems like this actually reached the server and gave me back the banana juice so what happens if I put down a single quote right now over here and I do see that I get an error this looks different from before. There's no banana juice anymore. There's actually a SQLite error. And 
you want to look at that really close because this is not just telling us that there is an error in my query. It also tells us the database behind it. It tells us that we're facing a SQLite database. And if we go back to our scoreboard, we see that we were asked for the DB schema. So next thing a Git hacker would do, if you don't know what to do at this point, is to use Google to search for DB schema of the SQLite database. So let's do that for now. I will say SQLite DB schema. And if we do that, we do receive a couple of interesting links. And I've actually went ahead in front of this recording and opened them up right over here. And then we'll go to the first one, which is the official page of SQLite. And I will go to a menu item over here, which is called Frequently Asked Questions. And there is an interesting entry in here, which says, how do I list all tables indices contained in a SQLite database, which usually is the schema. And then over here, it says, if you're running SQLite, you can use dot tables to get a list of all tables or you can type dot schema to see the complete database schema so that's interesting it sounds like exactly what we want to have and if you are not familiar with a specific database the first thing you should always do is set it up by yourself and play around with it and for that we need SQLite 3 and I've actually have my Kali Linux running over here. We have been setting up Kali Linux together in another video. If you want to do that as well or have no Kali Linux running, check out my video. I will link it in the top right corner. All right, so if you have Kali Linux running or any other system, any other OS, you want to have SQLite 3 to work with the database and to work with the whole um, product and see what you can what you can learn from it and what you would usually do is you can use a tool like app cache and say search for SQLite 3 and see what we get back and we do see that there is a SQLite 3 tool which is a command line interface for SQLite 3 in my case, as I'm using Kali Linux, this is actually already installed. So I will just um, clear that and say SQLite 3. And there we are. We do see uh, SQLite version 3.31 running. And what I learned from this page over here is that there is a dot tables command and that there is a dot schema command. So let's try those out. I will say dot tables and I don't get any results the reason is that this is a transient in-memory database so this is a fresh DB with no data in it and if I say dot schema it's also empty so what we gotta do while learning first is to create a database and if you don't know how to do that you can just google how to create a database with with SQLite but I will do that right now. I will just say create table and I will call this, uh, let's say, hexplain. And I will um, give it a parameter one and a parameter two. And I will close this. All right, so now we have a table. So let's try dot tables again. And we see that I do have a table called hexplain. So what happens if I say dot schema right now hmm, interesting so finally I get back something different I get my schema for all the tables that I have and this seems to be the answer that we want to get back from the database from SQLite running underneath OS two shot so the next question is how do we get that with an actual query because we see that we can query the database but we cannot use something like dot, uh, dot schema shortcut over here and for that I found something else which is interesting which is the SQLite describe table entry over here 
And if we scroll down, we see, oh, you can use schema, which is exactly what we just did. But you can also do something different. You can get the structure of a table using the SQL statement put down over here. So it says that the SQLite master table, which apparently is built in in all SQLite databases, you can query that and select the SQL parameter and then get back the whole schema. So let's try it out over here. Let's see if that works. So we can say, um, first of all, we can check the schema of the SQLite, uh, what is it called? SQLite master, whoops, there we go. So this is the schema of the SQLite master. Um, and we actually see that this, this table exists. So we have, um, Create table, SQLite master, which comes with a type, a name, a table name, a root page, and this SQL entry down below here. And apparently this is the one we're interested in. So what happens if we say select SQL from um, SQLite master? Let's see what that is doing. And if we do that, we see that we are getting the schema for the one and only table that we've created which is our Hacksplain table. Awesome. So now we want to know, or now we know how SQLite works and what we got to do to solve this challenge. So let's go back and I will go over here and use my verb repeater. So next thing we usually do while playing around with SQL injections is using the minus minus or the dash dash characters to make the rest of my query a comment and we're going to send this back to the server and we're seeing another SQLite error it says incomplete input and if you look down over here we do get quite a descriptive message over here which helps us as an attacker and if we look closely it says select asterisk from products where then the brackets over here name like banana then this is the quote I was filling in minus minus and then there's some more characters coming afterwards so this doesn't seem right it seems like that we have to insert a closing bracket or actually two of them right over here so let's try that I'll go back to my payload and fill in a closing bracket and it still doesn't work same error message as before. I'll do it again using two, and we do get success. That is interesting. So, what up next? We do know that we can inject a SQL injection payload. We do know that there is a SQLite master database that we can use to get the schema. Now we just gotta get the data out of it. And for that, we usually use the SQL union query command to have one database query, but then at the same time, union select data from another database. And I will show you how this looks like. So we will say, um, banana, quote, two times the bracket, and then we'll say union, which combines my two requests that I want to send. And I know this is getting a little tricky right now, but I guess it will get a lot clearer once I send this to the server endpoint. So I'm going to say, okay, I have my, my query number one, which is banana. I will close it. I will say union. And then right now I got to say percent character 20, which is just a space character in an URL encoded form and say select and then I gotta say percent 20 again and say asterisk and then I gotta say percent 20 from and do that one more time 20 and let's remember ourselves I will just open up this one more time. The 
table is called SQLite master. So we want to get data out of that. So let's see if we can achieve that. We want to get everything from SQLite SQLite master. All right. So we do get a different error message over here. It doesn't look that bad, but let's see how we can work with that. So right now it says you were using union, which I was doing, as you can clearly see over here, but they do not have, and let me scroll over here, the same number of result columns. And what that means is that the table our banana is in has a specific amount of columns. A column is something like, for example, the price tag or the name. So it has the name column, it has the price column, it has the amount of bananas in stock column or whatever. We don't know, but we do know that it's not the same number that we want to select right now as in the products table. So what we can do instead of using the asterisk character over here is we can use static values. And static values just say, if for example, I put down one, then it would say select one from SQLite master, and it would return the one in every single case, in every single row. So let's try that. We'll just say select one from SQLite master, and we do get the same error message. And what we can do right now is we can just count up the columns and see basically brute force how many columns the products table has. I know this is getting confusing, but I will do my best to explain this to you. So we're going to say one, two, same error, three, same error, four, same error, we're going to say five, still the same error, six, same error, seven, nope, eight, still the same error, nine, hey, and now we get a different message. So we know for a fact right now that the products table has nine columns. And now we don't have to guess their names anymore because we have them right over here. They're called ID, name, description, price, deluxe price, image, graded at, updated at, and deleted at. So if we go back over here and go back to OSPG shop and look at the entries in that table, for example, the apple juice or my favorite, the banana juice, we know that all those have nine different columns or like nine different data points to them. For example, we know, I guess the banana is ID number six or something like that. We've seen that before, right? So next up, we want to get the database scheme. And let me go back to this over here. We learned from this documentation and also from using our Kelly Linux that the SQLite master table has a column which is called SQL and that contains our schema. Okay, back to our repeater. I guess now we have everything we need to get this sorted out. I will go back to Choose Shop. I actually solved another challenge in the meantime, which I don't really need right now. So let's go back over here. And instead of using static values, the one, two, three, four, up to nine over here, we can say, okay, now I want to get the schema. And we know that this is called SQL. And if everything goes right, this should solve our challenge. So fingers crossed, let's see what happens. I'll send this to the server. And there we go. I actually already see the green box popping up in the back, which is always a good sign. And we do see the database schema right in here. So we were putting it in the ID column of the products table. And now we have all the tables that are used by OSP Choose Shop. We see a table called addresses, basket items, baskets, and so on and so on. Captures, cards, challenges, and much more. 
So we have solved this challenge. This was a tough one. I know. If you have any questions left regarding this video, I know this was a little hard. Comment them below. Put them on Twitter or anywhere you can find me. I will do my best to answer all of them. With that, thank you for watching as always. Subscribe to the channel in the top right corner and keep watching the rest of the playlist. Thanks for watching.